Example 3.10. In this example, a liquid can be siphoned from a container as shown, provided that the end of the tube, which is 0.3, is below the free surface of the container at 0.1, and the maximum elevation at 0.2 is not too great. Consider water at 60 Fahrenheit being siphoned from a large tank through a constant diameter hose. At the end of the siphon, it's below the, the bottom of the container by 5 feet. The atmospheric pressure is 14.7. We need to determine what is the maximum height of the hill where point 2 is located, over which the water can be siphoned without cavitation occurring. Before we start the analysis, we need to understand what cavitation is. Cavitation is a phenomenon in which there is a formation of bubbles within the liquid. We need to avoid this process according to the problem. So we need to determine what will be the maximum uh, pressure that it will be located at point two to avoid this phenomenon. The value of the pressure that will be the maximum that will be allowed before cavitation takes place is the vapor pressure. For us to be able to find that particular pressure, we will go to table 1b and we will get the value of the, va of the vapor pressure, as you can see here, for the temperature that is given. So for that particular uh, position, for P2, we're going to consider that the value of pressure is going to be equal to 0.256 PSI A. Please remember that the A is for absolute. Since we are going to be dealing with gauge pressures, we are simply going to say that P2 is going to be the amount that we have minus the atmospheric value, which is 14.7 PSI. Therefore, the pressure at point two is going to be equal to negative 14.4 PSI. Notice that the pressure at point two is negative, and that's what allowed the suction process to take place to have, to have uh, the water siphon from the tank. Now that we have the value of pressure two, we're going to write the quantities that we know for each one of the points. So we're gonna label for one, for two, and for three. The pressure at point one is equal to zero, since it's gauge atmospheric. The velocity at point one is also zero, we're assuming that is stationary, and C at point one is 15 feet. The pressure at point two, we calculated to be negative 14.4 PSI. The velocity at point two, it's currently unknown. And the elevation at point two is what we're looking for, which is capital H. The pressure at point three is assumed to be atmospheric, so it's zero. The velocity at point three is also unknown. And the elevation at point three is going to be negative five feet. Please note that we have to take the negative because it's below the surface that we took as the zero value. Notice that we have two, three different unknowns, therefore we need three different equations. We could have continuity between 0.2 and 0.3, and we could have Bernoulli's between 1 and 2, 1 and 3, or 2 and 3. So let's just start with continuity between 0.2 and 0.3. So it's continuity equation between 0.2 and point three. We have density, velocity at point two, area at point two, density, velocity at point three, area at point three. Notice that the fluid is incompressible, so the density is not gonna be an effect. And also notice that the hose has the same cross-sectional area uh, from point two to point three, therefore the areas are also canceled. That indicates that the velocity at point two and the velocity at point three are equal to each other. So now we could do Bernoulli's between, let's see, 1.1 and point three. So let's do Bernoulli equation between point one and point three. So we write P1 plus one half rho V1 is square plus gamma Z1 is equal to P2, I'm sorry, P3 plus one half rho v3 squared plus gamma c3. 
Notice that in this case, we have the pressure to be equal to 0, 4.1, the velocity to be equal to 0, 4.1. Uh, we have the pressure at point 0.3 also to be 0. And we will be able to have a relationship to calculate the velocity 3 since we know the value of Z1 and the value of Z3. So if we solve for V3, we could see that this is simply the square root of 2 divided by rho Z1 minus Z3. And if we plug in the values, we could find that the value of the velocity at point 3 is equal to 35.9 feet per second. Now we could do the same um, process and we could do the Bernoulli's either between 1 and 2 or 2 or 3. So let's do it between 1 and 2. So we could say that P1 plus 1 half rho V1 squared plus gamma C1 is equal to P2 plus one half rho v2 square plus gamma c2. Notice that we could once again cancel the pressure at this point, the velocity at this point. We know the value of c1, we know the value of the pressure, we know the value of the velocity, so we could find the value of c2. And by simply plugging in the values, we find that z2, which is equal to h, is equal to 28.2 feet.